everybody and thank you for watching another video from this channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk about polysorbates and specifically I'm going to talk about polysorbate 60. And the polysorbates are emulsifying agent and they are heavily used in food and pharmaceutical industry. And what I have here are three different types of polysorbates. I got polysorbate 20, polysorbate 60 and polysorbate 80. And these uh, surfactants or emulsifying agents are manufactured using sorbitol, which is a monosaccharide and sweet, and uh, with the ethylene oxide and also uh, fatty acids. Now the ratio of ethylene oxide to polysorbate and the type of fatty acid will give you different type of uh, polysorbates. Uh, these uh, surfactants or emulsifying agents uh, they don't smell good and I have already tasted them and they don't even taste good so the amount of these chemicals uh, are used in very low amount or very low quantity in the food products and even if they want to use more of it uh, then definitely they will turn the product to something which doesn't have a pleasant taste or probably doesn't have a, even a pleasant smell. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the uh, qualitative and quantitative analysis of polysorbate 60 and uh, I will get uh, talk about it when I get back to my computer. Okay, talk to you soon. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. So I will continue with showing you some slide about polysorbate 60 and how we can do the reverse engineering of this excipient in pharmaceutical dosage form. The polysorbate are the copolymer of sorbitol and ethylene oxide. And uh, to have like to make a polysorbate 60 then we need to have the steric acid uh, incorporated into this copolymer. And the, in, in general, polysorbates, uh, let's say it's polysorbate 20, 40, 60s, are distinguished by how, how many moles of ethylene oxide we have in this copolymer and the type of fatty acid. So in the case of polysorbate 60, we have 20 moles of uh, ethylene oxide per mole of sorbitol and the fatty acids are steric and palmitic uh, acids. Uh, the polysorbate 60 is, is a compendial excipient and there is a monograph of this chemical in USP. And the, in the USP we have a description here with the, the molecular structure of the polysorbate 60 that talks about the, the amount of uh, ethylene oxide uh, to be a tony mole and this uh, location of them could be in a position of X, Y or W uh, or Z and uh, for every tony moles of uh, ethylene oxide or uh, ethylene uh, oxide polymer we have one mole of steric or palmitic acid. Uh, also there is a description on the uh, ratio of steric and palmitic acid in the polysorbate 60 and it talks about uh, the steric acid to be between 40 to 60 percent and the combination of steric and palmitic should be more than 90 percent in the polymer. Uh, for qualitative and quantitative analysis I will talk about the USB 410 with the GC analysis I will talk about HPLC with RI detector and I will briefly discuss about the, the potential use of ELST. Uh, for the uh, USB 410, uh, this is the general chapter in the USB that talks about how we can do the fatty acid quantitation. Uh, there is a description on how to do the sophonication and um, some of the steps, as I said in my previous video, they are not necessary. Um, I definitely did not follow the exact procedure. 
for example, I did not use the 250 ml conical flask and I did not do the, uh, let's say, reflux. What I have done is to use the um, centrifuge tubes and use methanol and then probably I heat it up to uh, 80 degree, not more than that. And I did get I did get a satisfactory result. And then definitely I did not use um, certain steps in the uh, filtration to to make sure removing the residual water is not necessary. Uh, the key f uh, key uh, factor is that you need uh, whatever you do in during your reverse engineering, you need to do some accuracy in parallel to what you do, and you have to look at the recovery that you, you have in mind. And uh, you may want to follow exact procedure of 410 for the uh, fatty acid sulfonication, or may you want to deviate a little bit from it. But whatever you do, you need to do the accuracy. So following the sulfonication, what happens is that the fatty acids from the polysorbate 60 are, are, um, are taken off and then become methylated. So you, have, you end up having methyl serate or methyl palmitate in the mixture. So you do it, you do the quantitation with the GC. So the, again, this um, monographs talk about the, uh, it describes the GC uh, method with the, uh, with the ZB wax column with a certain dimension. And once again, uh, I did not use exact the same column. You could deviate it. You, you may even use the DB624 or DB5 or whatever the column is. And since you are only looking at the quantitation of two fatty acid, it is quite easy to get the chromatography that you, you are looking for. But this is a, uh, this method, GC method, is for the, uh, in the case that you have more than two fatty acids, uh, it is meant for the uh, USP 410. Uh, this is the example chromatogram of the methyl palmitate, the methyl sterate that uh, I, I generated using a ZB wax. It is very similar to the column described in the USB, but the probably dimension is not the same. Uh, with this method for the quantitation of your polysorbate 60, uh, you will get good uh, uh, information about the amount, but uh, regarding the grade, you will only get information about the ratio of steric and palmitic in your polysorbate 60. And probably this method, I'm quite sure, this method will not give you any information about the copolymer itself. Uh, there is another published method in the uh, website that talks about quantitation of the uh, polysorbates using HPLC RI. And the description is here uh, that uh, uses the size exclusion chromatography. Uh, this method you will get you will get information about the amount of polysorbate maybe you will get some information about the grade specifically the grade meaning the supplier versus supplier uh, raw material if you have supply a versus supplier b or supply c maybe you get some information but looking at the sample chromatogram the profile is very similar between the polysorbates so it is very unlikely that you will get some differences between like let's say 260 from supplier a uh, versus 260 from supplier b overall i would say that this method is very good for the quantitation but maybe you're not gonna um, uh, you're not gonna give you much information about the uh, the grade it is just giving you the amount Uh, this is the published uh, method for VHPLC and CAD detector. It's not the ELSC detector, it's a CAD detector. It is, I would say, uh, if you get a chromatography with a CAD detector, it would be, you would be able to generate a similar chromatography with ELSC detector. Uh, regardless, this is a method for the polysorbate quantitation. It could be polysorbate 20, 60, or 80 and you will see a very rich profile of these excipients and this is very good method for the uh, qu quantitative analysis that you want to pinpoint the uh, raw material supplier in the product that you're deformulating
but because you have multiple peaks using this uh, technique it would be very difficult for you to do the amount determination so you for the grade determination you need the combination of these methods maybe the RI for the amount determination and the CAD or ELC detector for the uh, grade determination um, showing you some information from the FDA IAD database these are the amount of polysorbates which are allowed in different pharmaceutical dosage forms and the information is here and depending on which type of product you are deformulating you definitely need to have this information in hand and also uh, the polysorbate 60 amount in the food products and depending on what food uh, we are talking about the amount is, is very low is a 0.1 to 0.3 percent and as I said before the these materials don't taste good they don't smell good so even if the limit is high uh, I would say it will affect the, uh, the product the, the, the product become, become very terrible tasting you're not going to be able to eat it uh, the reference are FDA, the USB, NF monographs, uh, Fisher Scientific website, Supplies website, and other sources. Thank you very much for listening to this uh, video. If you like it, I appreciate you to uh, push the like button. And if you have worked with the Polysorbit 60 and you want to share information with us, definitely uh, I encourage you to write a comment. Thank you very much and have a good time.